the Senate floor, made their way up to the dais, got their picture that is now uh, viral, viral on, on yep. social media, and now we're seeing Look how dispersed the, the hundreds of thousands of folks who have dispersed and are yeah. back in the streets. Yeah. Right, and I'm curious to see once uh, we know that National Guard troops, uh, more police, not just Capitol Police, but police from surrounding areas, are once they start showing up, I I'm curious to see how the crowds of people will react to that. Um, that's also something to keep in mind because like we've been saying, uh, many of these people have been getting lumped in with uh, a few that have been violent, but the majority of them have just been uh, peacefully exercising their right to demonstrate and again going back to the main reason why they're here is they don't believe that the 2020 general election was free and fair and president trump as we know encouraged them to get out there and make their voices heard and as we have said uh, i think for the last two hours now this is a mostly peaceful protest except for a few individuals that did break into the Capitol and whether it be like you said to get those pictures make a statement or whether or not they are actually Trump supporters or something else in disguise. I want to throw it now to our Jen Pellegrino. She is live in our nation's capital as well. Uh, she now has one of the eyewitnesses I believe Jen who saw when people first started storming into the Capitol. Take it away. Tell us his story. That's right, Dan. I'm here with Steve Maxwell. Steve's a business owner from Florida that came up. Uh, Steve, can you walk us through uh, your experience out here today, how everything went down? Uh, yeah, we, uh, we came up to support our president and uh, the situation with the Electoral College. Uh, was at the uh, meeting early this morning. Of course, the, after the rally, we, uh, we all began marching uh, down to the Capitol. Actually stopped by our hotel for a quick bite to eat. Uh, and then by the time we got here, uh, there was a breach. Uh, and the Patriots, um, I think, wanted to send a message. And uh, so that's, uh, we, we wound up being down there. Uh, Steve, did you know in advance that this was going to happen? Uh, no, we had no idea. It was uh, supposed to be uh, just a, a walk to the Capitol from the White House and uh, just to show uh, our unity uh, that the election we feel needs to be investigated before we declare a winner. And what was the scene like as you saw uh, these individuals starting to storm the Capitol? Uh, first of all, it was a little nerve-wracking, but then once we saw, you know, most of these people are families. I mean, it's uh, people like myself. I brought my son. I brought some employees, a business partner. We're not here. We're not rambunctious people. We're tax-paying, hard-working Americans. Uh, but when the, you know, you start breaching a wall, you start saying, "Wait, wait." And then once we saw what was happening, uh, we didn't know anything going on inside the Capitol. It was just on the outside. But it, there's a lot of pent-up frustration in America today, um, and. It was just a way to, to say, you got to listen to us too. Other people can break the law and they get a, what, get a free, free pass. Um, and we just want to let you know we're here and we are listening and we are, we're tired and we're not going to put up with it anymore. So it was, I think it was a little mini protest, if you will, to breach the wall. Uh, but uh, it, you can see the crowd. They're dispersing fine and there's nothing burning. Did you see much of a police presence in the area? There are Very some little. some people saying on, on Twitter, maybe these are Antifa related groups involved in some of this. What, what's your perspective on that? You know, I got a text from my family back home saying saying that same thing. And I sent a picture of my son and I said, Marshall and I are not uh, not Antifa people. Uh, so we did not see any of that. Uh, there could have been. I don't know. I mean, but for the most part, the people we've been with today have been just great American people, great American patriots. How has the scene been prior to that and even, you know, over the last couple of hours here? Has it been, have you seen mostly peaceful or has it yeah, been a it's, little it's, violent? It's, it's absolutely. I've, I've seen no violence at all. No violence. Uh, now they're bringing in the National Guard. They're trying to disperse the crowd. So there's been a canister of tear gas go off, but nothing violent we, that we've seen at all. And, uh, and I just want people to know, I, I think I speak for a lot of people out there. Um, we, we're just very frustrated that... Um, this has gone down, this election has gone down the way it has gone down. And um, we're here to voice our opinion. And um, if it's a, all we want is the truth. And if truth, truth's going to land where it lands, and whatever it is, we'll all accept it. But we got to get to the truth. And, and what's your perspective on, on how this went down today? Some people on Twitter, they're saying this is an embarrassment. Others are saying, I'm so proud to see uh, people taking a stand. How do you feel about that? I'll tell you what an embarrassment is. When we're the leading country in the world, leading technology company in the world, and we cannot hold an election, which we can if we choose to, but like we mentioned earlier, 
You've got people with good hearts and people with bad hearts. We should be able to hold a fair, transparent election in this country. That's an embarrassment. This is a result of that embarrassment. Now, Steve, I understand perhaps some groups are coming back tomorrow. What are you hearing about any further uh, action that people are taking? We'll be back in the morning. Um, as long as Congress is here, someone will be here. Um, but uh, because they don't have a lot of courage. in most cases. Um, so, but we'll be back in the morning for sure. Back in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, it looks like some of the groups are clearing out. You can hear sirens in the background, uh, helicopters flying over at the moment, a couple of uh, somewhat loud booms. It's, I'm told that might be tear gas, but that's the, the scene here on the, on the rooftop uh, across from the Capitol. Uh, and we'll send it back to you in San Diego. If there's any questions uh, that you have you want me to relay to Steve, I'll be glad to do that as well. Just, uh, I'd like to say to Steve, thank you for your service. Let him know um, from a fellow veteran to another veteran. And he sounds like, I think, a lot of the 74, 75 plus million Trump supporters who feel disenfranchised, who feel this election was stolen. And all we want and all Steve wants is the truth. So just thank him for us, will you, Jen? Uh, guys, I want to bring something up because just a few moments ago, we aired a statement from President Trump who was asking for folks to be peaceful, to go home, to not engage with law enforcement. Uh, there was nothing, I don't think, controversial about this message. We're going to play it for you again in its entirety. But I want to point out the fact that he put it on Twitter, like the president does most of his messages, since he doesn't get a fair shake with most of the lamestream corporate media. And immediately, Twitter, if you go look it up, did what? Flagged it. This claim of election fraud is disputed. This tweet can't be replied to or retweeted. So now Twitter and the big tech giants are inhibiting our commander in chief from sending a message to all Americans telling the folks on the Hill to be peaceful, to go home and not to engage with law enforcement. And Twitter, Mr. Jack, you know what? I've called him on my show several times, now thinks we should block that from being retweeted and reaching people. Americans, look what's going on. Look what's happening. If you